sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. I'm from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me. With everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. Come on. In the day of the war of the mystery. I raise, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, so sing it. Sing your lost, your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises. from Design to Live and I'm here to talk to you about when God says yes but you say no. Mm. Let's pray. Kind and Heavenly Father we want to thank you for the Sabbath day and we ask that you will be with us now as we look at how we need to lean on you, to trust you and to have faith in you. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to receive. All these things I ask in your precious name. Amen. So, we're talking about limiting beliefs today. So, a limiting belief is, is when people be, be, have a belief about themselves that actually limits the things that they do. They have ability, but they don't use it it just kind of gets limited because of how they believe what they believe about themselves now have you ever thought that maybe you're not experienced enough or rich enough or pretty enough or handsome enough or smart enough brave enough creative enough good enough or just worthy Maybe you'd love to, but, oh, you couldn't. I just couldn't. Let's leave that for the younger ones, for the older ones, for the fitter ones, for the more good-looking ones. The thing is, we as adults can convince ourselves of anything. But if you just think back a moment to when we were kids, when we were younger, we believed that we could do 
amazing things. There was no barrier. We could do anything. And if we believe that we could fly, then we got a towel, put it over our back and jumped. <laughs> now, okay, I admit that maybe we got a little um, bruised and battered and maybe a little beating or two, but we had that belief that we could do it and we just did it regardless. Now, there's something that happened between being a child and being an adult that from being 100% confident in ourselves to pretty much being zero. Now, there are many people in the Bible that had self-limiting beliefs. And I want to just talk for a moment about Moses. It's probably like the one with the most self-limiting beliefs in the Bible. Look, imagine the scene. He's on the mountain. He sees a bush burning, but there's no smoke. As he looks closer, God tells him to take off his shoes because where he's standing is holy ground. And God is, tells him all these things, amazing things that he wants from him, that he's going to help him to do. And Moses comes up with so many excuses and, you know, reasons why he cannot do this. And let me take you, you can turn with me to Exodus 4. Um, verses, let's go with verses 11 and 12. And Moses has just told him, told God that, you know, he's slow of speech and he slow, has, has a slow tongue. And God said, who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Or the deaf? Or the seeing? Or the blind? Have I not, have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Imagine that. You come up with an excuse or a reason why you can't do something, and God says, you know what? I got this. Don't worry. I'm going to tell you what to say. I'm going to tell you what to do. I, I will be your eyes, your ears, your mouth. I will help you. And that to me would give me the most confidence that, you know what, I can do this. How would that be for you? Now, there are many other characters in the Bible with self-limiting beliefs. You know, think of Paul, we think of um, Elijah even and um, remember he was on Mount Carmel and did an amazing demonstration of God being the one true God and the next thing he's running for his life terrified so one thing that we can that they could testify and we can find um, strength in is that when they did eventually trust God, amazing things happened. And it's the same for us. You see, because um, God has given us so many examples in the Bible of where he said, you know what, don't worry about it. I can help you. I've got this. I know what you're capable of. And so what I want to do now is go through six things, six, six tips and six things for you to remember whenever you're feeling that you're not strong enough, brave enough, good enough, and all of that, just to show you and to help you that you are enough. Right, number one, identify your self-limiting beliefs. Now, your beliefs really, or these self-limiting beliefs, are really based on fear. And fear is usually based on the unknown. 
And, you know, there's a saying that face the fear and just do it anyway. And it's, it's actually so true that when we don't, we have no idea what's on the other side. So I want you to, first of all, identify the times. Think back the times and places where you limit your abilities, where you feel that you can't, where you automatically say no. Um, write them down, recognize them, identify them. That is your first step to overcoming fear, right? Number two, establish where these fears actually came from in the first place. Now, for some people, this is easy because they know that they were that they had the confidence and they got up to do something, but maybe somebody said something negative or they gave constructive criticism that didn't quite go down with them too well. Now, bear in mind that we could have a uh, a thousand positive responses but sometimes it's that one negative one that says I didn't like it or it could have been better and that's the one that we focus on and that's the one that changes us and we decide we're never doing it again so establish where those beliefs come from number three determine if your self-limiting beliefs are actually true or not. Most of the time, they're not true. Most of the time, we've built ourselves up this big story that a disaster is gonna happen if we actually take that step forward and face our fear and do it anyway. But are they really true? Are they really these big, barriers, these big um, mountains that we have to climb? Or is that just all in our head? Next, decide that you will overcome the fear. Every time we're faced with fear, it's a decision that we need to make, whether we're gonna overcome it and move forward regardless, or whether we're just gonna cower and say no and not do it. I challenge you to decide to say yes, decide to overcome that fear and see what happens. Number five, this is really important. All of these limiting beliefs that you have, just give them to God through prayer. Just say to him, Lord, help me give me the strength help me to think more positively about my abilities help me to overcome my fear and then finally the bible is full of so many promises from god that can give us so much confidence and and belief and and just faith that we can do it and we need to lean on those promises you know promises like Jeremiah 29 11 let me read it one of my favorites where it says for I know the thoughts that I think are towards you God knows our plans he's ordered our steps remember and the thoughts are of peace of love and of a sound mind. That's what he wants for us. He doesn't want us to be quivering. He doesn't want us to be weak. He doesn't want us to, um, to, no, that's the other one. And uh, sorry, <laughs> thoughts of, I'm getting them mixed up. So 2 Timothy 1, 17 is where God says that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, a spirit of, of uh, peace and of a sound mind. So don't stress about your fear because God has more for us. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, and to give you an expected end. 
he knows already our, our steps are ordered and he just wants the best for us so he doesn't want, it, want us up there to be you know to embarrass us he has messages for people and think about all those people that when we say no when we don't believe that we can do what God knows and has designed for us to be and to do then there's people out there who are not getting the blessing that we could that God has, has used us to give to them and uh, you know it's like we have to have that confidence that whatever we can do that our abilities are there for his glory not for our own and we're just messengers messengers we are vessels that God is using and we don't necessarily know what he's using them for but guaranteed that there is a reward for us once we say yes and once we are available to be used now what I want you to do is think about the times when you have actually said yes the times when you have overcome your fear and you've done it anyway you know it's like we look back and we think what was I thinking <laughs> it's so much better over here I have all of these blessings waiting for me that I had no idea were there in the first place. What was I thinking? Why did I even think and say that? Look what I've been missing out. And what I want to leave you with is a story about David. He had been... Um, with the Philistine camp and, and the other Philistine leaders didn't want to to go to war with them on with David on their side because they didn't trust him so um, it was like Achish said go home don't worry about this one I, I trust you but the others don't so him and his men went home and as they got nearer they could see the smoke and as they got Back to Ziklag, they realized that uh, the Ammon, the Amalekites, the Amalekites had just raided Ziklag, their home, and took their wives and their sons and their daughters. And they began to wail. They began to bar. They began to, you know, just just break down with grief because their loved ones had gone and then they turned on David and they wanted to stone him now David had a choice he could either just say yes it's my fault I'm I, I'm no good I can't even protect our loved ones who what good am I but what he did is he encouraged himself in the Lord that's right there in 1st Samuel 30 he encouraged himself in the Lord and he then called the priest and he went and he seeked the Lord to say Lord what do I do do I go after the Amalekites will I get our people back or you know do I just stay here what do I do and the Lord said go you will you will win and so he went and with the help of a, 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 an Egyptian slave they found the Amalekites and yes they they got their their loved ones back and so for you if ever you're feeling like you can't or whatever that is <laughs> that you're not good enough encourage yourself in the Lord seek him ask him to help you ask him what to do and if he tells you just just go for it then trust him have faith over fear and
end and do it anyway and he will reward you and you will feel the blessings that he has for you so just one more thing um, before we finish and I have a faith over fear 31 day reading plan for you it's free <laughs> um, all you need to do is email me or send me a message on social media and it's 31 texts in the Bible that is going to help you and um, build your confidence to choose faith over fear so if you want a copy of that it's just a PDF that you can put up put up and remember uh, the first of the month is around the corner so you can start it's the 31 days for the whole of the next month and choose faith over fear and stop believing in the promises of God and know and be assured and confident that he is there guiding you all the way let's pray kind father we ask now that you give us strength you give us power give us love give us a sound mind give us all that we need to be to have faith and to be overcomers of fear help us to uh, to rely on the promises that you've given us in the in your word help us to be encouraged in you and to always seek you to give us the strength that we need take us through the rest of the day and continue to bless us Lord all these are things I ask in your holy and precious name Amen.